Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now, I'm going to do two versions of this um, process which will be boosting or changing the colors within an image, image using either just a hue saturation slider or by a way which I've just seen in a tutorial which was um, given away free with Digital Photo magazine in which case you paint in the colors and then blend them in. So first we're going to look at the hue saturation slider version but before I get into that there's something I want to have a look at and have a slight moan about Serif's um, Affinity Photo program and something that they've done or rather they haven't done in the color tab up here let me just drag this out so it makes it a bit easier for me to point, point out what I mean is by default the colors are set in white and black which is a good thing because white and black are probably the two main colors you need especially when you're dealing with layer masks and things like that so it's quite good to be able to get back to black and white quite easily um, now by pressing the X on the keyboard what you would do is swap the foreground and background colors quickly but if you've picked a certain color say if you just click blue just clicking the X will just, it won't bring the colors back to black and white. It will just keep re changing from foreground to background color, which is basically what that little icon up there does as well. It's the same as pressing the X key. Now in Photo Plus and other photography programs like Elements and what have you, Underneath the foreground background color, there's a there used to be an, an icon here, which when you clicked on it, would change the colors back to black and white quickly. And this, but in Affinity Photo, this icon just makes the color selection blank. So again, just pressing the X will change it from blank to a color, which is of no use to anybody. So if I wanted to get back to black and white, I would have to sort of click somewhere down here in in the color bar and then bring all the sliders back to black. And then for the other color, just bring all the sliders over to the right to make it white. It would have helped if Serif had made there a quick way in Affinity Photo to bring the colors back to black and white. So what I've done is if you press um, control and comma it will bring up the preferences panel. Um, there is a way to get it via the menus, I can't remember what it is now. But come to keyboard shortcuts and then you've got two options here, photo and file. If you click on the drop down menu for file and come right down to the bottom it's miscellaneous and one of the options is set fill to black and white now as X is already a way of changing the colors up here um, I'm going to use X again but obviously I need something to go before it because X has already been used and as you can see here the swap line and fill is already used using the shift so I'm going to use alt and X and then just close that so if I now pick a different color there press alt and X it automatically goes back to black and white why they haven't made that a feature from the outset I really don't know so that's the last of my moans over and let's get on with the tutorial 
Right. right. We're going to start off using the hue saturation slider. But before I do that, I just want to make a duplicate copy of this background. So I'll just right click that layer and come to duplicate or you can press Ctrl and J. Just so that I can come back and show you what the original looked like before I make any alterations. You don't necessarily have to do this bit, but I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. So now I have my new copy of the background layer. I need the hue saturation slider, which will come to the adjustments panel and it's HSL adjust. And the HSL panel opens up. So I'm going to be changing the color of the sand, the sea and the sky. So I'm going to be doing this three times, but at the moment it's going to be a global adjustment, but I'm just looking at how it affects the sand. So I'm going to push up the saturation. So the sand is a nice yellowy color. And like I said, don't worry about what's happening with the sky and the sea. You can sort of make it a bit darker, a bit brighter. But I'll go with about there. And then just click on the X to close that. We come back to the layers panel. As you can see, the hue saturation slider is on a new layer and it has already got a layer mask on it. So this is where we need to paint onto the layer mask. So we come to the brush tool and it should, if black and white are selected, when you click on the paintbrush tool, it will make black your foreground color, even if it wasn't beforehand. So, because it is a white layer mask. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the opacity at 100. I'm going to increase the hardness up to about around the 50% mark. And then I'm just going to paint onto the layer mask. In fact, I can increase the size of the brush by pressing either the left or right square bracket on the keyboard and just take away some of that effect that the hue saturation slider had an effect on the sky and the sea. There we go. And as hopefully you can see here on the layer mask, it's got black now at the top where I painted and the white area below, which is where the sand is, shows you know, that that is not being affected by, you know, by the paint that I've just put on there. So if I turn this on and off, hopefully you can see that the, it's, ju it's just the sand that is changing color. So if I again click on the layer below, we'll come to the adjustments panel just shut that and then click it again to make a new adjustments layer for the hue saturation slider this time I'm going to be looking at the sky and I'm just going to boost if I boost the color right up to 100 you can see it really breaks down badly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just boost it to about there for now but I do want to change the color slightly which you can do from the hue shift sliders here. Now the top one is really just showing you to, which, to where you're going to move the bottom one to, be it the red end of the range or the yellow end of the range. Just helps guide you where it's going to go. So I'm just going to move this down just to put a bit of, maybe a bit of pink into the sky. And maybe make it a little bit darker. 
and then press the X to get rid of that. Come back to the layers panel and you can see we've got a new hue saturation slider adjustment with a new layer mask. Black is still a foreground colour and if I paint on the, the layer mask now I can just remove any effect that this particular layer is having on the image by painting black onto that layer mask. There we go. And if you want, you can lower the opacity just so that it is just a, a subtle tonal change to the sky. Right, so again, come back down to the background layer, come to the adjustments, shut that, and then click on it again for a new layer. And this time, now I'm going to look at just the C area. Now, this one really doesn't have too much of an effect because there's not a lot of pixels in there for this to work with. Um, now you can push it right the way up or right the way down to black and white. There's no real change in the colour of the actual C itself. And even if I try and move this up to the blue spectrum, it doesn't have a major effect. But I'll just leave it there. Come back to the layers. And again, I'm going to paint black onto the layer mask to take out any effect on the sand area at the bottom and the sky area at the top. That's, that's probably not perfect, but it's good enough for the demonstration purposes here. So I've now got three different hue saturation slide and layers each with the layer mask painted on and each affecting different areas so if I press control and highlight those three layers just click on one of the X's it will turn them all off that was the start image and that is how I altered it. If anything, and you really needs the the C. If I turn off this one altogether, then you can, you can just see that altering the C in this particular case had no real effect. So you don't really need that particular layer. You're just working with these sky and sand. And uh, really that is the end of that look at altering this picture using the hue saturation slider. So if I just click on this, I've made a copy of the image here. And now we're going to use the paintbrush tool. So again, I will just duplicate this background layer. And this is part of the du um, tutorial that, like I said, was uh, I saw in digital photo magazine and it is a slightly different way of doing this and it is just using the paintbrush tool and this is where being able to change these colors back to black and white a lot is helpful so first of all you need to make a new pixel layer You're just clicking on this icon down here and then we need the paintbrush and as you can see at the moment it's set on white as your foreground color and if I click on the paintbrush tool or even just press B on the keyboard this should automatically change to black as your foreground color. So we need a color for the sand so it's going to be somewhere in the orange range it's, um, no it's not Let's try that colour there. So I'm just going to 
paint over the sand area. Try not to go too close to this person. And just lower the size of the brush. And what I need to do now is change the blending mode to multiply. And you can alter the opacity to alter how much effect this has on your scene. I'll leave it around 42%. So as you can see, That is the effect that that is having on the sand. But I think I'll just bring this up a bit more just to over accentuate that colour. There we go. Now, obviously, that has affected certain areas that you don't want to affect. So I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer. And to add a layer mask, it's just this icon down here which is like a circle inside a square and it has added a white layer mask to this layer. Now this is where being able to go back to black and white is handy because I need to be painting black onto this layer mask. So I can just now press Alt and X and that will change that back to black and white. So if I hadn't added this new shortcut at the beginning that wouldn't have worked and I would have to keep faffing around trying to get back to black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in a bit here. Lower my brush size and I'm going to paint black onto this layer mask just to stop the effect of the painting that I did earlier affecting certain elements of this picture. Um, I'm not going to be too fussy. But if you, you can see what, what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to bring back some of the colours that were already there. I mean, if I was doing this properly, you could take your time let me just zoom out again and as you can see that rock there and that area there has now come back to its normal colour so next we're going to work on the sky so highlight your top layer layer and then click on make a new layer icon your paintbrush pool tool is still selected so now we need a colour for the sky. Now I'm not going to go for a blue, what I want, I'm going to try and get a similar sort of pink tint like I did on the previous version. We'll try that one. Increase the brush size. Again using the square brackets tool on the keyboard. And then just paint this in to the sky area like that blend mode is uh, multiply and then reduce the opacity let's go down to about 25% just to add a sort of a pinky tint to those clouds and again I'm going to add a layer mask I need black so I need to use my alt and x shortcut and I'm just going to zoom in a bit and I'm just going to take a little bit of any of that color that may have seeped over near to the 
horizon there. And then just quickly zoom out again, and then I can just go over the bottom half of this area so that it's not affecting the sand that I did earlier. And it's pretty much finished that. There we go. So again, highlight the top layer. In fact, probably what I should have done to get this to work properly was to highlight the top layer. Because I don't think I've actually painted anything onto anything because it wasn't highlighted. This is one annoying feature of Affinity Photo. It, if you click on an adjustment or something, it jumps off the layer that you are on. So when you come back to use it, the tool or another tool or something, it's not on the layer anymore. So you have in absolutely no effect whatsoever. So we now highlight the top layer, click on a new layer. And this time we're going to be changing the color of the sea, hopefully. So this time I'm going to go for a blue color. That's about there will do. Let's lower my brush size and then paint it. Just lower the brush size a bit more. Nearly there. Right, I'll leave it at that for now because this is only for demonstration. So I will come to multiply. That is a bit more noticeable. Let's just go back. Yeah. And then lower the opacity. About there, add a layer mask, and just zoom in a bit, press my Alt and X shortcut to get back to black quickly, and then make sure the layer is highlighted, make sure the layer mask is highlighted. This is so confusing. You click on the icon for the layer mask rather than the icon for the layer. If you click on the icon for the layer, it highlights both. I just want the layer mask to be highlighted as this is the, the bit I'm going to be painting black onto. And I'm just going to go over these old World War II pillboxes that are in the sea just to take off that blue colouring tint that I may have added to it. There you go. Just change it over to white and maybe bring back some of that blue, although I must admit I must have missed that bit. Like I said, I wasn't doing this particularly that finessely, finally, however you want to pronounce that word. Um, so as you can see there, I've changed the colours of the sand, the sky and the sea using paintbrush tool rather than the hue saturation slider. It probably has had more effect on the sea area than you, I could have got using the hue saturation slider. And then if I turn off 
these three, all these ones. No, this. I always forget how to do this. Press control and highlight all of these. And then if I turn off the bottom one, that's how we started. And that's with the different effects. Now, it is rather horrible, I must admit. But it does show you what you can achieve by either using the hue saturation slider in conjunction with its own layer mask or by using the paint tool and using the multiply option in the blending mode and the opacity and then add in a l your own layer mask and paint in black onto that layer mask to hide anything that you don't want to be affected so if nothing else so hopefully this will get you to add a shortcut to, so you can quickly change back to black and white in your paint colors because if you are going to be using lots of layer masks believe me you will be swapping between black and white quite often um, so thank you for watching and goodbye